Hi everybody, Patty Ann here. I'm using this cute little penguin mug because it's still freaking cold here. Really unusual for us here in uh, North Carolina. But anyway, today I'm going to show you how to take or how to put, let's see, um, an offset around your images that you might want to use in Cricut Design Space. You'll need to download the free program called Inkscape to do this, but it's really easy and it really kind of puts a nice finish on it. So for example, if I was doing maybe this, I could put an offset of a white border around her and it might just finish her off just a little bit nicer. I can make the uh, border if I want to a black or any color that I'd like for the offset. So I have a bunch of notes that I've been taking that I'm going to use and I'm going to write these up and I'll have them available for you for download either on my website which is pattyannsplace.com or on my Facebook group page which is Cricut Design Space with Patty Ann. So I have a file that will give you step-by-step -step directions on how to do this in Inkscape. So that's it. Join me down here at the computer so I can show you how to get ready to add the offset in Inkscape. Okay, as a little refresher, I'm just going to remind you how I like to look for images if I'm using them as a print and cut. And they're not just cartoons, they have a lot of shading and detail, and I want that to show up. So what I do is I just come up here to Tools, and of course the type, uh, any type I have here, or I could do Clip Art. I'll just leave it on any type for now and for Tools. And then it says Size over here. I want it to be larger than 1,600 pixels by 1,200 pixels. The reason being, again, is because I want this to really print out nicely with good shading and good coloring. So that's what I'm going to leave it as. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is to... Well, that's probably all I need to do right now. I'm just going to do this image called Toy Story. Now let me tell you something that I did wrong, and you may do this sometime and wonder why are my images a mess. You cannot just click on this little tiny image and save this picture as something because this is just a little tiny thumbnail that's showing up here. You need to click on this image to get to the real one, this one, and then go File, Save Picture as Toy Story Logo. And see it's Toy under story underscore Story underscore Logo. I'll show you the difference between another one that I had done before. So I'm going to save that. Notice it does have a transparent background, and that's because it is a PNG file. And that just makes it a lot easier for us. Okay, I've opened up Inkscape, that free program, and now I'm going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to look for the one that I saw that I want. It's the Toy Story with the underscores, because notice how large the dimensions are on this one. 2000 by 1465 as opposed to this one 262 by 192 that wouldn't work well at all we need to get the large image so we're going to open say okay and it does come in really really large it comes in as millimeters i'm going to change that to inches so i can understand it more clearly and i'm going to make it be oh i'm going to lock this lock first because I want the width and the height to change proportionately. So I'm going to change this to 11.5 because I know that'll fit on my mat. And when I, hit, when I hit enter, the width will change also. So there it is. And now I'm going to hold down the control key and use the scroll wheel on my mouse to bring that in closer so I can see it. Now notice there's a, a, a dashed box around this image. And if this were not a transparent image, inside of that dash box, from the dashes to the image, it would be a solid white color. And I wouldn't be able to see through it. But since it is transparent, if I roll it over here, over top of this solid dark line, I can see the solid dark, dark line. So that shows that the background is transparent. So. The next thing that I'm going to do I 
I'm going to go to object, I mean path, object to a path. And then I'm going to come down here to the paint bucket that says fill bounded areas. Click on that. Up here, I'm going to leave the alpha like it is, threshold like it is, and grow or shrink by as it is. Uh, the color I'm going to have as my fill around it is going to be a gray color, which is perfect, so it shows up. So let me click down here. And that did pretty well. Some of it didn't close up. And if I had changed the threshold, it may have done better. But I can fix that easily by coming over here to the Edit Path Nodes. And some people go node by node and delete each one. But you can just draw a box around them and hit delete on your keyboard and they're all gone. A box, hit delete, and they're all gone. Now, one of the things is now you can't see the actual image, but it's just behind this on the lo layer behind it. So if I go to object and I lower, I'm sorry, I lower to bottom or hit end on my keyboard, that brings up the original one. And that's pretty good. I don't think I really want that uh, to be that big, this. So I think I might undo that. Okay, so we're back here. I'm going to come to the paint bucket. I'm going to actually going to highlight this first. Come to the paint bucket. I'm going to make it a little bit of a lighter. Whoops, not up there. Down here, I can make it a little bit of a lighter gray color. And then the alpha's okay. The threshold's okay. I'm just going to move this down a little bit because I thought it was just a little bit too big. Maybe I'll make it a hundred millimeters. And of course, I'm using the tick, tick, tick button. You could just type in 100. Let's just leave it at 100.80. So then I'm going to click here. And once again, not everything got uh, covered up. So I'm going to come over here to Edit Paths by Nodes. I'm going to highlight this one and delete. Highlight this one by drawing a box around it and delete. Then I'm going to come up here, Object. I'm going to move, lower it to the bottom or hit End. And that's still pretty darn big. Let's try it one more time. So I undid it all. I'm going to select it. Paint Bucket. Alpha threshold grow or shrink by I think I'll make it 60 and then I'm gonna come down here and click again not everything got covered but that's easy you know that now delete delete send it to the back Okay, I'm much happier with that. The only other thing is I don't want it to be gray when I do it. I want it to be white. So I can just change it like that. Now notice it's really hard to see. But if I click here and go over, you can see that it's there, right? Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is come back to this arrow. Put a big square around all of, all of it. Make sure you get it all. If you're not sure, go to Edit and select all go to object and group and then i'm going to come up way over here to the right where it says export area and i'm going to export the selection and i'm going to export it as and i can change the name here i do want to leave it to say dot png so I'm going to make it say Toy Story Logo. Whoops, get my hands on the home keys. Oops, what? Dot P P N G. And then I have to come down here. I can't just export it as. I must come down here to where it actually says export.
Okay, you can see that now, I think. Export. Okay, now I should be able to come over here to Cricut Design Space. I'm going to upload, and I already had one, so let me delete this one. So I'm going to upload an image. I'm going to browse. Toy Story logo. Toy Story logo new. <clears throat> there it is. Oh, okay. All right. So now we want to do this as a complex image. And the reason being is watch this image over here. Here's complex. Here is simple. With simple, notice I lose a lot of the shading and the 3D effect. And that's what I want to get with my um, printing. So I'm going to hit complex and go continue. Fixing this so you can see it a little bit better. Continue. It's really big. I'm sure I don't have to erase anything. So I'm just going to go continue. I can type in Toy Story if I want to over here. And maybe logo. Save. And there it is. If I insert the image, I actually changed the color of the background here so you could see the white that I put there. If you're ever needing to see something that's not showing up, right here you can change. Usually it's a white canvas here, like that. But you can change it to a different color so you can see it more easily. Okay. So there it is. I think it's gorgeous. I think that really has a nice touch to it. Uh, in order to print this, of course, I would have to slice it because, let's see, what is the size of it? It says it's 11.23 by 8 something. So what I would probably do then is bring in my shapes. And I've done this before, and this video is getting really long, so I probably shouldn't do it again. But if you're not sure how to do it, look at my videos that I've done showing how to slice. So that's it. Thanks a lot for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you soon. Bye.